Let us learn about the structure of a pharmacovigilance system master file. What are the components or sections of a PSMF? A PSMF consists of 10 sections. First is the main body of the PSMF, which is the heart of a PSMF. The main body includes a summary of the pharmacovigilance system. Annex A provides information on the QPPV. Annex B pertains to the organizational structure of the marketing authorization holder, and the people responsible for the pharmacovigilance system, including the vendors, business partners or distributors. Annex C pertains to the sources of safety data. Annex D pertains to the information on computerized systems and databases. Annex E pertains to pharmacovigilance processes, that includes SOPs and working practices. Annex F pertains to the performance indicators, that provide information on the compliance status. Annex G pertains to the quality management system, including audits and inspections. Annex H pertains to the list of authorized products. Annex I or the log book contains the revision history of all versions of the PSMF. We will now learn about every section, in detail. The main body is the most important section of the PSMF. Cover page is an integral component of the main body of the PSMF, and includes the unique number assigned by the regulatory agency, or the UDRAVigilance system to the PSMF. The cover page also includes name of the MAH, the QPPV responsible for the pharmacovigilance system, as well as the relevant QPPV third-party company name, if applicable. The name of all concerned MAH sharing the pharmacovigilance system needs to be included. The main body also includes the list of PSMFs for the MAH, and the date of preparation or last update. The PSMF shall also contain a note associated with any major or critical findings associated with an audit. The corrective and preventive actions should be recorded in the main body of PSMF, and these should remain until the actions are considered to be resolved. As a means of managing the pharmacovigilance system, and providing a basis for audit or inspection, the PSMF should also describe the process for recording, managing and resolving deviations from the quality system. The master file shall also document deviations from pharmacovigilance procedures, their impact and management until resolved. This may be documented in the form of a list referencing a deviation report, and its date and procedure concerned. Annex A pertains to the qualified responsible person, or the QPPV. The information relating to the QPPV provided in the PSMF needs to include a description of the responsibilities guaranteeing that the qualified person has sufficient authority over the pharmacovigilance system in order to promote, maintain and improve compliance, a summary CV with the key information on the role of the qualified person responsible for pharmacovigilance, including proof of registration with the UDRA vigilance, or the regulatory authority. Besides it will contain contact details, of the QPPV, the details of backup arrangements and details of the local QPPVs. A list of tasks that have been delegated by the qualified person for pharmacovigilance also needs to be included. This should outline the activities that are delegated and to whom, and include the access to a medically qualified person if applicable. Annex B pertains to information on organizational structure of applicant, or the marketing authorization holder, that also includes the business, partners, vendors, and service providers. We need to maintain a list of contracts and agreements with the service providers. It is also advisable to maintain a copy of the individual contractual agreements. Besides, we also need to provide a list of distributors and licensing partners. The description of the main units for safety data collection should include all parties responsible, on a global basis, for solicited and spontaneous case collection for authorized products. 
This should include medical information sites, as well as affiliate offices and may take the form of a list describing the country, nature of the activity and the product, if the activity is product-specific, and providing a contact point address, telephone and email for the site. The list may be located in the annexes of the PSMF. Information about third parties, that is license partners or local distribution or marketing arrangements should also be included in the section describing contracts and agreements. Besides, sources include data arising from study sources, including any studies, registries, or surveillance activities. Besides, this will also include any patient support programs sponsored by the marketing authorization holder through which ICSRs can be reported. The location, functionality and operational responsibility for computerized systems and databases used to receive, collate, record and report safety information and an assessment of their fitness for purpose needs to be included. Where multiple computerized systems or databases are used, the applicability of these to pharmacovigilance activities should be described in such a way that a clear overview of the extent of computerization within the pharmacovigilance system can be understood. The validation status of key aspects of computer system functionality should also be described, including the change control, and nature of testing. Besides, backup procedures and electronic data repositories vital to pharmacovigilance compliance should be included in summary, and the nature of the documentation available described. For paper-based systems where an electronic system may only be used for expedited submission of ICSRs, the management of the data, and mechanisms used to assure the integrity and accessibility of the safety data, and in particular the collation of information about adverse drug reactions, should be described. The Annex e pertains to operational processes, that includes QMS documents, such as, standard operating procedures, or working practices. The MAH is expected to provide a list of SOPs pertaining to pharmacovigilance systems, and safety-related regulatory affairs. Besides, safety interface with the quality department also needs to be considered. We need to include the list of SOPs for pharmacovigilance quality assurance. Apart from these, we also need to include the safety and quality interface with the IT. This includes the processes associated with safety systems, the backup activities, and the validation-related activities. In some companies, we may have certain safety interface activities being handled by the marketing teams, for example, website management, or even patient support programs. Even these need to be considered in Annex E. PSMF should contain, evidence of the ongoing monitoring of performance of the pharmacovigilance system, including compliance of the main outputs of pharmacovigilance. The PSMF should include, a description of the monitoring methods applied, and contain, an explanation of how the correct reporting of ICSRs is assessed. In the annex, figures or graphs should be provided to show the timeliness of 15-day and 90-day reporting over the past year, and an overview of the timeliness of PSUR reporting to competent authorities, should be included. A description of any metrics used, to monitor the quality of submissions and performance of pharmacovigilance, should include information provided by competent authorities regarding the quality of ICSR reporting, PSURs or other submissions. An overview of the methods used, to ensure timeliness of safety variation submissions compared to internal and competent authority deadlines, including the tracking of required safety variations that have been identified, but not yet been submitted. Where applicable, an overview of adherence to risk management plan commitments, or other obligations or conditions of marketing authorization relevant to pharmacovigilance, should be provided. Annex G pertains to the Information on Quality Management System, for pharmacovigilance. Information about quality assurance auditing of the pharmacovigilance system should be included in the PSMF. A description of the approach used to plan audits of the pharmacovigilance system and the reporting mechanism and timelines should be provided, with a current list of the scheduled and completed audits concerning the pharmacovigilance system should be maintained. 
This list should describe the dates of conduct and of report, scope and completion status of audits of service providers, specific pharmacovigilance activities or sites undertaking pharmacovigilance and their operational interfaces relevant to the fulfillment of the obligations, and cover a rolling three to five year period. Annex H pertains to the information on products and licenses. We need to include the list of local licenses, that is the information on marketing authorization granted to the company. In case of EU, local would mean all the member states in the European Union. We also need to provide the commercialization status for all these licenses. The pharmacovigilance needs to ensure that there are mechanisms for communication, as soon as the product is launched in a territory. Next, we need to provide information on the risk management plans, if available for the product. When available, we should also enlist the non-routine risk minimization measures, if applicable. We finally need to provide the global licensing status for the molecule, and this is irrespective of the formulation, as pharmacovigilance reporting happens that way. Descriptive changes to the content of the master file must be recorded in the logbook. It is necessary for marketing authorization holders to implement change control systems and to have robust processes in place to continuously be informed of relevant changes in order to maintain the PSMF accordingly. The competent authorities may solicit information about important changes to the pharmacovigilance system, such as, but not limited to, first, changes to the pharmacovigilance safety databases, which could include a change in the database itself or associated databases, the validation status of the database as well as information about transferred or migrated data. Secondly, the changes in the provision of significant services for pharmacovigilance, especially major contractual arrangements concerning the reporting of safety data. Third is the organizational changes, such as takeovers, mergers, the sites at which pharmacovigilance is conducted or the delegation, transfer of PSMF management. In addition to these changes being documented in the PSMF for the purpose of change control in the logbook, the QPPV should always be kept informed of these changes. Changes to the PSMF should be recorded, such that a history of changes is available specifying the date and the nature of the change. What did we learn today? We learnt about the various sections of the PSMF. We started off with the main body of the PSMF, that is regarded as the heart of the PSMF. Besides, we learnt about the nine annexures, and their contents. We trust you found this useful. Feel free to contact us, in case there are any questions, comments, or even suggestions. Also, we request you to subscribe to our channels.